Yo, this is the Clockwork Pi Pico Calc. It's a build-it-yourself kit based on the Raspberry Pi Pico. On paper, it looks amazing for anyone who likes to tinker, code, or just likes old school tech. It's pretty much a mini pocket-sized computer that is open source and programmable. So I've spent the last six months with it and I've found some things that aren't as great as they seem. Now, before you spend your money, you need to know about the messy software situation and a disorganized community that could leave you stuck with a pricey gadget that doesn't do much. Well, I'm Jay Blanks, and today we're going to get into the real story of the Pico Cow. So let's start with what this thing is supposed to be because the idea is actually pretty cool. Now, the Pico Calc sold as the perfect gadget for people who love to tinker. At its core is the Raspberry Pi Pico that a lot of makers love. And it also has a surprisingly sharp 320 by 320 screen, a full mechanical keyboard with a backlight, an SD card slot, speakers, and a headphone jack. It's all inside this solid, chunky, retro looking case and it runs on two 18650 batteries that you have to supply. But the whole point is that it's easy to modify. So you can swap out the standard Pico module for a Pico W or a Pico 2W to get Wi-Fi or more processing power. And there are GPIO pins on the side, which make it pretty easy to connect things like sensors, motors, and lights and use it to control your own custom projects. And the software side sounds even more impressive. Since it's an open platform, it can run languages like C and C++, MicroPython, Lisp, and Rust. So it's not a locked down device. And for a kit that started at $75, you're not just getting a calculator, you're getting the idea of a portable, programmable computer you can do anything with. You're buying potential and that's really appealing if you're into tech. When I first got it, I was pretty excited. Putting it together was quick, maybe like 10 minutes and the device itself feels great. You literally just put in the speakers, connect the screen's fragile ribbon cable, and snap the Raspberry Pi Pico into the board, and then just pop in the keyboard. The hardware feels well made, the screen is definitely bright, and when you turn it on, you instantly get the vibe. For the first few hours, it literally felt perfect. I wrote some programs, messed around with commands, and enjoyed typing on the keyboard. It was like a little window into a simpler time for computers. Updating the firmware is also super easy. You literally just drag and drop a file and then the device reboots with the new software. And honestly, I thought this might be the best gadget of the year. But then I tried to do something more serious about it and that's kind of when things went wrong. The initial excitement faded pretty fast once I tried to do more with it. Now, the first problem is the documentation or really the lack of it. Like if you want to do more than just use the pre-installed firmware, there's pretty much no guides to help you. You have to go around for information on different GitHub pages and confusing forum posts. So basically you have to figure it all out yourself. I even created my own awesome PicoCalc repository to help beginners get started. Now, poor documentation can happen with specialized hardware, but the bigger problem with the PicoCalc isn't just that it's difficult to use, it's that the whole software environment feels broken. There's a lot of disorganization and conflict in the community that undermines what the device is supposed to be. Now, the hardware is great, but the community around it feels empty and sometimes argumentative. And this is the main issue. From what I've seen, there are two big problems. Well, the software is all over the place and the community never really came together. Well, first, let's talk about the software. The PicoCalc can run a lot of programming languages, but there's no central direction. 
The included MM Basic is fun for a bit, but you'll hit its limits fast. And to do more, you have to go looking for other options. But instead of people working together, I found a bunch of separate disconnected projects. It definitely seems like developers would rather start from scratch than build on what someone else has done. It's really weird. You'll see several people making their own versions of the same old basic games or text editors instead of teaming up to make one really good. And the result is a lot of unfinished projects that get abandoned. A lot of people bought this when it was first announced, but without a clear software direction, they were left with a fun toy instead of a useful tool. Well, that leads to the second and maybe bigger problem, the community. Now, Clockwork Pie, which is the same company that makes the Pico Calc, is known for making great hardware, but then taking a very hands-off approach with the community. They have a forum and a Discord, but from what I'm seeing, they mostly just let users fend for themselves. So the initial excitement wore off and what's left is a quiet and divided group of users. I even saw people push back against the idea of working together. One developer on the forum said that encouraging teamwork was policing the community. That doesn't sound like a healthy community to me. It's just a bunch of people doing their own thing separately. And that's how you get stuck with a cool device that has no real support system. But despite the fragmented community, the hardware itself was too good to ignore. I've always been interested in Raspberry Pi Pico projects, and when I first heard about the Pico Calc back in early April of this year, I saw its hardware as the perfect platform to build the system I had always envisioned. So I started my own open source firmware project called PicoWare. It has literally become one of the top community projects aiming to provide the cohesive operating system the PicoCalc deserves. Once installed, PicoWare gives the device a proper graphical interface and a suite of powerful tools, including an on-device Python editor, a full app system, and even its own app store that you can access right from the device. It truly shows what this hardware is capable of, but it also highlights a central issue. This level of functionality shouldn't depend on a single separate project and the kind of thing the company and the community should have been building together from day one. And that brings us back to the reality of the PicoCalc. The device is a good example of the risk that come with niche tech products. It shows that a good idea and good hardware aren't everything. Without good documentation, leadership, and people working together, even a cool open source project can just fizzle out. The idea of ultimate hackability sounds great in an ad, but for a lot of PicoCalc owners, it just leads to frustration. You're not just learning to program on it, you're learning how to deal with a messy collection of software and fix other people's unfinished work. There are also hardware issues like a screen that's easy to break if you're not careful. There are multiple people like myself who cracked their screen just from the pressure of closing the case, which is a big letdown for a device that's meant to be taken apart and put back together. Well, after all that, is the PicoCalc even worth buying? Well, for most people, I'm going to go with no. Now, if you're a student who needs a graphing calculator, just buy a TI-84. If you're looking for a fun retro gadget that works right away, this is not what you want. The promise of being able to hack it is buried under the reality of messy software, bad documentation, and a disorganized community. However, there is a very specific type of person this might be for. If you're a hobbyist, a maker, a programmer, or someone who just loves old computers and know what you're signing up for, then maybe. If you see it less as a finished product and more as a project board, and you actually enjoy the challenge of working 
with a difficult, unsupportive device, then it could be for you. And if you want to help out with the PicoWare project and build the software this thing really needs, then yes, it's a great piece of hardware to work with. But you have to know exactly what you're getting. You aren't buying a finished calculator. You're buying into a flawed but interesting project that will probably be frustrating. You're taking a chance on a community that might not be there to help and buying a pocket computer that's more of an idea than a reality. I'm Jay Blaint. Thanks for watching. Peace.